we're going to have some examples of using um, the Google Cloud platform. So first, we're going to start off by um, talking about what is cloud computing. So cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources over the internet with um, basically pay as you go or like monthly pricing. So instead of purchasing or fully owning and maintaining a physical data center and all different sorts of servers, you can just access tech services such as um, storage, computing power and um, databases on like a as you need basis from cloud providers. So. Um, Google Cloud Platform is one of the cloud private providers and other ones you may have heard of are probably like um, Amazon Web Services. And pretty much basically cloud computing is just a delivery of these different services over the internet and um, offers basically it's faster, it's more flexible resources and um, it's a lot cheaper. So we see cloud computing in um, infrastructures we use every day, such as Google search, YouTube, Gmail itself. Um, in these cases, Google just uses its own cloud computing platform to host these sites. And um, like I said, the delivery of on-demand different source of services over the internet includes analytics, um, storage, and databases. So um, why would business want to use these and who uses this? Um, and go back to the previous slide. I'm just adding on to it. Yeah. Um, so the reason businesses want to use it, uh, want to use cloud computing over, I guess, traditional computing um, and hardware software methods is that you basically, it lowers your operation costs um, by a lot and your infrastructure can run more efficiently since you're just paying it for as you use the service and you can easily, easily scale as your business um, gets bigger or smaller. Uh, and you can pay for services as you see fit. In general, um, organizations of every sort of industry, uh, every type, every size are using cloud for a wide variety of use cases. So um, there's so much more to what, what's listed on the slide here. Like there's data backup, there's um, data recovery, email, virtual desktops, software development, um, beta testing, and so many more. Like some examples are that healthcare companies, they use cloud to develop more personalized treatments for patients. Financial services or finance companies are using cloud to basically power real-time fraud detection and um, scam prevention. And then other industries like um, game makers, they use the cloud to deliver online games to players from around the world. So one thing I like to say is that um, it's not exactly cloud computing. It's not exactly something we're gonna use in say a classroom setting. Um, it's hard like in like an academic setting, it's rare for us to need cloud computing um, for the amount of data or what we're trying to do. But in general, um, because it's coming becoming very popular in industry, it's just something I hope everyone takes away is um, that the basics of cloud computing and it's good to know if in the future, like say in a job interview, you're ever asked about um, what, if you know what cloud computing is. So yeah, just some basic information on um, what it does and how it benefits businesses. Next slide. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the other benefits of cloud computing. Um, first of all, um, main thing would be cost. Um, basically cloud computing eliminates capital expense of buying um, individual hardware and software and setting them up and then running them on site. So for example, like a data center, you would have to buy racks of like servers and um, around the clock electricity for power. And you also need to hire more people like IT experts for um, managing all the infrastructure. So that sort of cost can add up fast, especially if you um, deal with a lot, if you're a company that deals with a lot of data. Um, the benefit of cloud computing is that it basically takes away that expense of purchasing everything and then finding a finding people to manage it. Um, you only pay for IT basically as you consume it. And um, in general, the expenses are lower than 
if you would do it yourself and pay for everything individually. So this is pretty much um, the best solution for large companies with a lot of um, data and need to work on um, managing storage. So second thing would be, second uh, benefit would be productivity. Cloud computing basically, um, like I said, removes the need for on-site data centers and um, on-site data centers, they typically require a lot of setup um, and racking and stacking of hardware um, in addition to software patching. So these are all pretty time consuming like IT management chores. And when you are working on the cloud, it removes the need for, or it helps speed any of the, all of these tasks up. So the IT team in your company can spend more time like achieving other important non-tedious um, goals. Next slide. Two more benefits of cloud computing include um, speed and performance. So the cloud um, essentially it gives you easy access to a wide range of tech so you can build faster, innovate faster in nearly anything that you can imagine. Um, and you can quickly just find and buy resources as you need uh, to use them. So um, it's this besides storage, just storage, this goes into like machine learning, um, data analytics and a lot more. And you can basically, since it's over the internet, you can deploy uh, tech in just a matter of minutes and also deploy globally. So um, basically implementation, it's much faster than if you were to do it um, by yourself. And it also means that businesses have the freedom to experiment and test new ideas and see how um, they work with the customers. So um, that's the one thing with um, cloud computing speed. It really just saves a lot of time. And for performance, um, basically you don't have to um, over provision resources upfront and handle like um, peak business activity and um, when it's like super busy. So instead you just think about um, the resources that you need and the resources will handle performance by itself. Um, and then you can scale the resources up and up or down as needed. Next slide, yeah. Um, and then the two last things um, that are big uh, benefits for using the cloud is that um, it's very reliable. Um, it helps with um, backing up data. And uh, so like if you delete a file on accident, um, usually like different cloud computing softwares, they have ways of backing it up so that um, you'll basically never be able to lose it. And um, because of that, it just makes everything a lot easier. You don't have to back up manually and that's also less expensive. In terms of security, um, different types of cloud computing like architecture, they, they have different policies that help you determine like what level of security you want um, and how much you need. And it basically protects everything that um, you're working on from any sort of like third party or malware or anyone trying to steal your data. Next slide. Um, really quick, I just want to go over the typical types of cloud computing architecture. So there's three types, generally uh, three types of different architectures. There's the public cloud, which means that the application is fully deployed online. Everything runs in the cloud and um, cloud-based applications can be built on low level infrastructure pieces and can use high level services that provide abstraction from um, all aspects of the, like managing the application. So basically public clouds are owned and operated by um, just like a cloud service provider. They, like the cloud service providers deliver their com computing resources just over um, the internet. Everything, hardware, software and supporting infrastructure is owned and managed by the cloud provider. So you just, you are accessing those services and managing everything that you're using um, in your account through a web browser. And in general, the apps have either been created um, in the architecture you established on the cloud or you migrated over from um, like an existing structure that you had um, before using cloud. 
Um, oh, next would be, can you go back one? Private cloud. Yeah, so the opposite end um, of public cloud will be the private cloud. It basically means that um, it ensures like maybe operations with sensitive data, uh, they can't be accessed to like third party cloud service providers. Um, computing services are, you can choose for it to, uh, to be offered over the internet or just through um, your internal network. And you can even pick and choose users instead of the general public being able to access um, the application or the data. And the good thing about this is that this is a very high level of security and privacy. You're using company firewalls and you're hosting the app internally, which means that um, it's very unlikely that someone will get in. But the one drawback is that um, basically the entire IT department would be responsible for the accountability of managing the private cloud because now it's not the third party service managing your privacy. It's the company itself managing itself. So um, private clouds will require more work. Um, it, will, it would require the same amount of staffing as before management and maintenance, like you still have to pay for that um, as like a traditional data center. Next slide. And then lastly, it's the hybrid cloud. So this is um, a combination of public and private cloud. So, um, it's it's um, it, it's a combination, but it's bound together by tech that allows data and applications to be shared between the public cloud and the private cloud. And when you allow data and applications to move between private and public clouds, a private a hybrid cloud would give um, your business a lot of flexibility, and you will have more options in terms of deployment. It can help you optimize your existing infrastructures, security, and whatnot. And um, there's other, th these are the general um, cloud computing architectures, but there's also different types of services that um, gets into too much of the nitty gritty, but basically uh, it's like software as a surface, uh, service, not service, um, or serverless or infrastructure as a service. Um, and these are sometimes called cloud computing stack because they're built on top of one another, but um, they're basically different types of services and um, it's more specific to what the business needs. Next slide. So we have, um, we're gonna talk about the different uses really quick of cloud computing. So these are just some examples of how cloud computing can be used. It's not everything that it does, but um, this is some like, these are some pretty powerful ways that cloud computing can be used. And you're probably using cloud computing um, in your daily life, even if you don't realize it. Like if you use an online service like Gmail to send an email or edit documents or string movies or string music, um, it's most likely that that service is um, operated with using cloud computing. Um, so here are the examples. Number one is create a cloud native application. That basically means that you can quickly build and deploy and scale applications, um, whether it's on web, on mobile, or using an API. Um, and you get to take advantage of cloud native, which means that they're built from the, um, their cloud native applications are built from the ground up um, and you can control on like every aspect of it in terms of performance. Um, and next for building and testing or testing and building applications, you basically, if you were to do it um, on your own, like building and testing apps, um, you would basically spend more time in it and you would cost, it would cost you more money um, than using a cloud infrastructure. You can store and backup and recover your data because um, it's all done over the cloud. And you can protect, if you have a lot, a lot of big data um, on a, like a massive scale, cloud is good for protecting um, your private, your data privacy uh, at a co cost efficient way. And um, for, you can also analyze your data, cloud service, there's cloud services such as machine learning um, and artificial intelligence that help you uncover insights um, from your data. And then lastly, the last two, like I said, you can stream audio and video 
Um, so an example of that would be like YouTube and Spotify. And finally, deliver software on demand. That's, as I mentioned before, that's just software as a surface service. You can um, offer your latest software to customers um, anytime, anywhere, basically. So next slide. Um, we're gonna talk really quickly about what Google Cloud is and what is the Google Cloud platform. So um, GCP is essentially a suite of cloud services that is hosted on Google's own infrastructure. And Google offers a wide variety of services and APIs that can be integrated with any cloud computing application or project. So um, Google basically like there's over, they offer over 90 products and services such as like cloud databases, storage, um, app engine, waste managed data, um, and even cloud artificial intelligence. And what they do is um, they, they can manage like app hosting, scaling, monitoring, um, and let you build your own infrastructure. There's also a concept of um, virtual machines within GCP and it allows you to build your own application like if you had your own hardware. Um, and then, yeah, there's a lot of basically services they offer and their own like their own services like YouTube, they run on their um, internal infrastructure too. Next slide. Um, so in general, there's seven categories of Google Cloud services. There's, a, since they offer so many, they're categorized into kind of these big, um, big categories. Um, so number one is computing. Um, there's different computing options that let you decide how much control you want over operational details and then um, and also your infrastructure. Next is storage. Um, there is a lot of data storage and database options for both structured and unstructured data. Three for networking. There are services that help balance application traffic and also provision the security. For cloud operations, there's a suite of um, monitoring and um, just other service like reliability tools. Um, and then as for tools, that's, it's, that category is um, for services that help developers manage um, different types of deployment and application build pipelines. For big data, um, like I said, there's storage, um, solutions for data, but these services can also allow you to analyze um, really big data sets. And then lastly, for artificial intelligence, there's um, a suite of APIs that run specific artificial intelligence and machine learning tasks directly through Google Cloud. Next slide. So Google Cloud APIs, um, that was the last thing that I talked about on the categories um, of Google Cloud services and Google Cloud APIs are a huge part of Google Cloud. So just like the amount of services that they offer, there's more than 200 APIs um, and they cover a broad range of um, industries like from business administration to engineering and machine learning. And you can easily integrate all of these APIs with Google Cloud projects and applications. APIs stand for um, Application Programming Interface, by the way. So um, basically, these are interfaces that you can call directly um, or via your like client libraries when you're um, using the cloud terminal. And um, yeah, um, most cloud APIs provide you with detailed information on your project's use of that API. So it also gives you basically um, data on how well it's performing, um, how well the API is performing, and you can find problems really quickly using these services. Next slide. So these are just, um, this is a screenshot directly from um, GCP um, where you can, where they like list out all of their different APIs. So these are just some examples of their machine learning APIs as well as um, Google Google's own APIs. So 
um, really quick, you can see that there's um, the third one on in machine learning, that's Cloud Natural Language API. So you ba it basically helps you with NLP. Um, it's an API that helps you with um, processing language. And then for the first one, um, it's dialogue flow, which means that you can build chatbots with it and um, it helps with any sort of conversational um, interface that you're trying to build. In the middle, that's Cloud Vision API and that is used for um, analyzing images. So if you have a lot of image data, that's the API that can help you um, maybe classify them or um, label them. And um, yeah, next slide. So it's hard to do um, a like a live demonstration over webinar, but we're basically going to walk through like a simulation of what it would be like to mm. deploy on uh, Google uh, Cloud. Yep. Mike, do you want to add anything? Yep, uh, I will take this section if you would like. So. Um, did everyone get my message in the chat about claiming your Google Cloud credits? Um, we're just going to take a moment to have everybody claim their Google Cloud credits so they can follow along. Um, thanks, Brittany, for the first part, by the way. Uh, and yep, if everybody could take a moment to claim their credits and make sure that your credits are uh, indeed redeemed onto your Google Cloud Platform account. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and uh, Anesh, can you uh, enable multiple screen share? Uh, sure, let me find that out. Um, yep. I'm on should, be, should be in the screen share settings. Okay, it should be should be there. All right. Um, so once you guys have filled out the form, you should get an email with a redemption code for the uh, Google Cloud uh, Platform. So let me just get this shared. Um, Harsh, I'll have you reshare the slides in a moment, but. Uh, you got when you guys redeem the link, you should be able to see the promotional credits on here. And uh, you should be able to have a billing account that is connected to uh, your Google Cloud platform account. So you should be able to have the stuff in your billing account. Like I said, the uh, let's see the promotional credits here. And then I'll ask everyone to navigate back to here and uh, make sure that you can see something like this. Um, and what I'm going to do is ask everyone to start a new project. It can be called Hack PSU. It can be called anything. And set the billing account to the one that you just redeemed. Now, I seem to have three duplicates, but just set it to the one that's named Google Cloud Platform Trial Billing Account and click create. Um, now it doesn't seem like we can share two screens at once. So uh, going forward, we're going to have to uh, share the slides. So you won't be able to see me actually going through the uh, deploying the Node.js application, but I will be walking through alongside you guys. And if you guys have any questions at all, please drop them in the chat and Dana or I will get to you guys uh, and try and help out. Michael, uh, can you share real quickly how it, to make a new project? Okay, um, to make a new project, what you do is you click up here and then you click new project in the top right corner. Uh, some of you might not see this screen, in which case you'll just look for a button on the dashboard named new project and then create a new project from there. Uh, Harsh, if you can reshare the slides, we can get going with the uh, Node.js deployment. Yep. Cool. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, Brittany, do you want to take this part or should I? I can. I can do it. Um, so, so this is just. Um, it's not a step by step um, of how to um, like deploy a Node.js um, 
application, but it's just kind of an overview is to show everyone how, um, in general, how easy it is to deploy um, an application in the app engine, and then also certain certain aspects of GCP that's important to take take note of when you um, deploy something. And um, so, first of all, there's two things that we're trying to do here um, for this little example. You're trying to create a Node.js Express application on the Google App Engine, and I'll explain what both of those are in a minute. And you're also trying to upload code for your, or sorry, update the code for your application without restarting the server or taking the server down. You're, you just wanna upload um, your changes and then have everything just uh, continue running. So first of all, really quick, what is Node.js? Um, Node.js is, it's, it lets developers use JavaScript to write command line tools for um, server side or backend scripting. So you're running scripts uh, server side to produce a dynamic web page um, and uh, dynamic web page content before the page is sent to a user's web browser. So it's basically um, it's using JavaScript for um, backend. So first of all, um, I want to talk about what deploying applications actually means. Um, so it, it's pretty simple. It just means you're putting whatever app you made it onto a web server so that it can be publicly accessed through an URL. So um, the goal is essentially to make whatever application that you made available to your audience, to the users. If a user opens their browser, all they have to do is type in www. You know the URL, whatever it is, .com, and then they should be able to see the fully functioning app. It's a process, essentially deploying applications, it's the process of packaging your application files and then transferring them to a target app server. Um, and that's that involves a series of activities that basically means that it basically makes any software system available for use. So in general for de um, deploying, there's no like standard or singular procedure, like every system is unique and depending on what you're trying to do and what tools you're using, um, the de deployment process will vary. It will have to be changed to your requirements. And um, as for the app engine, the Google app engine is essentially a way to build and deploy apps quickly and using um, popular languages and frameworks. So you don't have to, when you deploy using the app engine, you don't have to worry about um, like behind the scenes stuff such as infrastructure and um, other security problems. This, the Google app engine essentially just allows you to focus purely on um, your coding of your application and creating it and not all the finicky stuff behind it. Um, so as for frameworks, um, I, I just wanted to find um, like different web app application frameworks. Um, essentially, web app frameworks just supports the app development and helps with things such as layout um, and logic and um, of the application when it's ex executed. So um, GCP, like part of deploying applications is how different web frameworks can be integrated with GCP. Next slide. So um, I already talked a little bit about app engines, but what are app engine applications? So the app engine is a platform as a service, service and a cloud platform for developing and hosting web apps in Google's data centers. So it's really easy to create your applications and easy to maintain. And it's also easy to scale your application as um, maybe the traffic of your application goes up or you have um, a lot of data that got gathered by your app and something needs to change. So there's no, so, so there's nothing for you to maintain. It's all maintained on Google side and all you have to do is upload your app. And another thing that's good about App Engine is that, like I said before, it supports a lot of different types of programming languages and frameworks. Um, so the flexible environment supports um, languages such as Java, Python, PHP, and Node.js. Um, and essentially this gives users maximum flexibility on how their application behaves since different environments in, or different um, frameworks have um, 
different strings. Next slide. So this um, this screenshot is essentially just um, what the what you have to do before using an API. Um, so I just went to the App Engine admin API and enabled it um, for this example. And um, you don't have to worry about this or this part because um, it's just done directly through GCP before I started using the Cloud Shell. Next slide. Um, and this right here is just, um, you, you're, um, I cloned um, example source code from uh, the home um, directory and, and GitHub, I, and yeah. So, okay, I cloned um, just a example code from GitHub and then I installed dependencies with NPM and NPM basically stands for um, Node Package Manager. So that's I, the command that Node.js uses. And um, it also is a build tool for front end. And by the way, this thing that you're seeing, that's a cloud shell. So it's like a terminal or a command line for um, Google Cloud Platform. Next slide. So all you have to do to, oh, go back one. All you have to do to run the app locally is to use the command um, npm like I talked about before, um, the node package manager and it's npm start and then um, say it's just, um, you just you're use, you're just outputting hello world. So it you get this little text deployed um, at a, at a like an AOAO dot um, URL, and that means the application is running locally. Next slide. Um, so now we're going to deploy. So before that was deploying, um, you're running the application like on your computer locally. It can't be accessed by other people yet if they were to type in like a www dot um, URL. So to deploy the app into the app engine, um, here are the two lines of code that you need to run, I think is it's just runtime Node.js and environment. So you're saying that it's, you're trying to get the flexible environment. So it's just nflex. And the second, the below part um, that you're seeing, that's just the um, nano app like dot YAML. And this is just a configuration that's needed to deploy a Node.js application. So, um, next, um, to deploy, all you have to do is type gcloud app deploy and it will automatically start deployment and it may take several minutes as you can see on the second screenshot, um, it's doing everything on its own, but um, the reason this will take a while and um, the reason there you kind of can't see what's going on is because the app engine flexible environment automatically provisions a um, virtual machine for you behind the scenes. And then it automatically installs and starts the application. So you don't really see what's going on here. All you have to do is um, type a few commands and get things to run. Next slide. Um, and here, what you can um, see is that you can now, um, basically view your web application in a browser with a um, URL. So all this did um, essentially is to quickly um, deploy a application um, where everyone, as long as they have the URL can access it. And um, you've set up a basically a simple Node.js application and deployed your application onto the app engine. Next slide. Um, in this part, um, it's it's just to show another good thing about the app engine. It's um, when you need to update your application. So with that line of code, which is npm install, um, essentially um, what I was trying to do here or um, what, what's happening on screen is that um, when you're trying to update the app, um, you can get a UUID and the UID stands for universally unique identifier. So you're getting a new um, identifier every time someone visits your page. So this is useful if you're say using it as a database key because everything's unique and you're trying to track um, people that the traffic that comes onto your, your site and uses your application. So um, now you see 
in the second screenshot that um, the app itself updated without um, without taking the entire server down. Um, and you have the new like ID, that string of random numbers and letters is just um, the ID of the per of you yourself um, accessing the application. But yeah, you've updated your Node.js application without any downtime. And um, essentially this is just to show how easy it is to deploy apps on the cloud and to also update them. And um, it shows that you don't have to do much of the work on on the behind the scenes, like the back end part, um, GCP does everything for you. All you have to do is deploy. Next slide. Um, Harsh, uh, if you wanna talk about your project with Firebase, but this is essentially just a simulation of a project that uses Firebase. So, hey guys, I'm Harsh and I'm the tech lead at DSE. So I'll be talking about Firebase and what how it exactly helps in web deployment. So Firebase is a, basically a platform that's uh, designed by Google for actually deploying uh, web apps and mobile applications onto the global servers. So it is a very powerful tool as to, you know, it allows us to track how your view, how your website being viewed, how your apps are actually being um, used by people and stuff like that. So it's a very powerful tool when it comes to front end web development. So definitely it's worth learning or something. So this is how generally an active uh, deployed. Uh, so if I have a, have a project and I've deployed it on Firebase, then what it essentially, this is what it looks like. So it kind of tells me the status of my web application when it's deployed and what's the overall status has been. So this is this is a pretty old picture, but it up, it's a very updated format and goes in a really real lifetime, uh, uh, live uh, time uh, format. So it keeps on updating very frequently. And uh, on the left, if we see that it has a lot of other uh, applications like a real-time database, uh, like a cloud fire store, storage, hosting. So it, it's basically a package which has a lot of things that can help you with your web development. So for example, like cloud fire store just helps you access different cloud services that Google has to offer. And then real-time databases, for example, if I have a form on my website, then that database keeps on updating itself. And then it's a dynamically uh, allocated memory altogether and then your database is always updated with all the information that you have and similarly storage it stores all the data that comes in from the database and then hosting is for example if you want to give it an actual url so for example harshgupta.com so you can do that by hosting it and then machine learning is when you want to incorporate some machine learning within your code or some or within your website or something like that so generally um how you want to do it is so when you want to actually uh authorize your account in GCP. These are the two things that you need to do. So first thing is that you uh, actually authenticate your account and all the accounts that are there. So that is like GCP cloud configure that configures your account and shows that, okay, yes, this person is allowed to use these services and he has access to all of this. And then the list project is gonna be listing that, yeah, okay, under this user, I have access to these projects. So that's how it goes. And now, for example, if I have a Git repository where I have a lot of Python, I have a lot of front end code, I basically clone that into the GCP Cloud Console. Um, and then once I do that, I go to uh, Firebase where I, I create a new project. And once I create a new project, I always make sure to name my project and make sure these categories over here are all um, checked, mark checked, so that you know your project can be a lot more efficient and you can get a lot of updates like Google Analytics kind of tells you a lot of information about how how your website is being perceived by the viewers all over the world and stuff like that so it provides you a good information about your website and so so once you actually register your website just um, try giving your app a nickname that's something just for you no one else gets to see it so and something like that. So then also the, you can set up the fire host hosting, which kind of tells you that, you know, uh, what the web app is gonna be named as. It's not gonna be something, again, it's not gonna be something that's gonna be displayed. It's just a nickname. It's just a name for Google uh, GCP to understand, yes, that yes, this uh, access uh, key is given to this particular website. And then all you have to do is register your website. So uh, this is what basically, uh, something that else you need to do is probably have Google sign in authentication. 
which allows managers, um, which allows basically to uh, help you actually understand who all have access to the website. And maybe if you can using Google, um, using Google login credentials. So this is something that's very user dependent. If you want to do it, you can, you, if you don't want to do it, that's totally fine. Um, then something that you'd need to do is on your cloud shell, you need to have something called a uh, fire. So you, you need to install Firebase. So for example, if someone who works with Python, uh, he might have to install a library like so pip install, uh, pip install say math, um, pip install math. So for something that that you have to do for Firebase is you have to actually download the Firebase where uh, Firebase uh, cloud, oh, sorry, on GCP Firebase, you need, always need to update it and you need to make sure that it's always authorized as per your login credentials at GCP. And so now you need to add your project onto Firebase. So basically first thing that you do is you navigate to the pro place where your project is. So for example, if my project's on the desktop, then I would navigate myself to the desktop. And then I would actually set up my C a command line interface for Firebase on that project itself. So for example, I, I would write this command, the Firebase use add. So this allows me to enter all the information that enters all my uh, code onto Firebase. So like how we consider GitHub where, you know, once we have a basic code, we get it onto, we use the command git add that basically adds all the changes onto the staging area. So this is the first step for your project that this adds everything to a staging area. And then once you send it to Firebase, that's where you'll be actually committing. So that's where your code actually gonna go to the global server altogether. So, so once you wanna uh, uh, commit the code, all to get to you, you have to do is Firebase serve only hosting. So basically it's gonna give you the, uh, the output below and it's gonna tell you that yes, your website has been hosted and that's um, done from this and this local host and the port numbers and this gets port 5,000. So something, uh, so basically then all you have to do is basically you've give, you'll be given a um, basic URL that will allow you to, you know, you view your website. It takes about two to three minutes to deploy your web application and you should be good to go after that. And anyone you send that link to should be able to view it all together. So, so why, uh, sorry, why do we talk about Firebase a lot? So Firebase is something really important because it's really versatile and it has a very vast range of things that you can do. So Firebase helps us allow, allows to actually, you know, uh, show the, your projects to maybe recruiters or maybe to, you know, people who you closely work with. So it's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very dynamic software that allows you to work, um, deploy web applications for free and it does not have any additional costs as such. And also um, some th additional things that we need to know are that importing a Firebase SDK is very easy and the documentation that Google provides is very helpful for you to understand. And also um, setting up a user sign-in allows us to track your users, track, your, track the activity on the website and how people have been interacting with it. So that's a really powerful tool. It helps you to have a messaging system using Firestore and allows us to read and synchronize messages and images and also allows us to handle notifications. So, so at the end of the day, when you actually, uh, it's a web application that you see over here, that's the final product. And that has a lot of uh, spoken value, um, that has a lot of commands you can mention in here. So basically the link that you see here is something that your username is gonna be, and it's gonna generate an automatic e uh, a URL that's gonna be for the public to see. So this is something that I have worked on, which is a coronavirus tracker, which I worked on it in June. And kind of what it did is this used, I coded this in React, which is a JavaScript web framework. And this is again deployed using Firebase. So as you see here, the link over here, so the, it shows it's a Firebase app and COVID-19 tracker FE8518, which is another unique code that's given to the website as per the name that I had given. So, Again, so as you can see, Firebase is a really critical tool in modern web development, and it's really easy and fun to play around with. Yeah. Michael, do you want to take on this? Um, okay, Harsh, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, so if any of you want to uh, deploy GCP or Firebase solutions in your own project during the event, 
uh, there are a lot of different tutorials online for, uh, you know, how to get your own Google Cloud project going. Uh, I recommend particularly the tutorials by DigitalOcean uh, and some other ones online as they're pretty good and pretty comprehensive about how to get these projects spun up. Um, so you can claim $25 worth of GCP credits uh, for your own use during this event by going to this URL at the, uh, on the slide right here. And uh, please do note that these credits are North America and EU only. So if you're based in a the Asian Pacific, you should put down that you're actually based in the US to get these credits. Um, you can ask the MLH coach on duty, who is Mora, for up to three refills of $25 each if you happen to uh, use up all of your credits. But uh, I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with uh, using GCP. Uh, there is an MLH Best Use of GCP prize available at this event for everybody to compete for. Uh, and the prize will be Google Swag Packs for every single member of the team. So uh, if you want to go for that prize, it is a relatively easy thing to integrate into a project. So I can't wait to see what everyone does with it. But uh, thank you guys for all attending our workshop on the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, if you would like to attend more workshops that we host on a regular basis, please fill out our uh, forum to join our club and receive our information that I'll drop in the uh, chat right now. Uh, uh, we have if regular... anyone has any questions, feel free to ask us. Uh, please don't hesitate at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will be in the Discord server all day if anyone needs any kind of help with uh, GCP or Firebase at all. My nickname on Discord is the same as my name here, Michael Chow. And uh, please feel free to DM me or the MLH coach on duty with any questions you have with GCP at all. So thanks for coming again, guys. And we will see you guys all later.